So, hi everybody. So, uh, I'm here today with you in order to discover how social network impact your research visibility and uh, to analyze some good profiles of your colleague on Twitter and TikTok. So, uh, when you decide to go on social network as a researcher, you have first to analyze external factor influencing your adoption of social networks. And you have to, because you have to be clear in your mind about your objective, your target audience, and how to select the best channel to reach your audience, but especially you have to be able to adapt your discourse to your target and your channels. So you have to be strategic and build a current and effective social network strategy. Be present on social networks can impact your access to grants. Why? Because now, now in uh, many, uh, many grant proposal ask you to uh, fill in a part, a mandatory section uh, concerning the broader impact of your research. So uh, you have to explain how uh, your research impact on, uh, have an impact on society. How to do this? If you are present on social networks, you can translate your present in altimetry score and the altimetry score can easily quantify uh, this impact for external stakeholders, institutions, founders, and even uh, normal citizens. So there is another effect on your present on social networks because uh, when you have to manage a very high level project, founders and uh, grant committees I require you uh, to increase not only your individual visibility, but also your team, your group, your network visibility. And there is a, some, uh, there are some uh, uh, quantitative um, studies showing that uh, the more productive scholars are also the more engaged scholar in publication, in public communication. So you can see here some links uh, from founders in which, uh, for instance, Swiss National Science Foundation or the European Commission or the European Research Council explain uh, uh, how you have to be present as a manager of project on social networks. So there is also here a link to dedicate training from Swiss and National Science Foundation about how to write on social network as a research that, have, that, have, that has to manage a very high level project. Uh, other factors that impact your presence on social network are open access policies because now you have uh, content that can be legally used on social network platform if you adopt, of course, uh, open access uh, rules. And uh, open science policies are in direct effect of uh, this use of social network by researchers. Uh, because uh, open science policies are integrated in many, many grants and many proposals. So, um, of course, there is an indirect relationship. Last but not least, even traditional metrics can benefit from your presence on social networks. Why? Quantitative studies uh, show that uh, social media foster international cooperation and co-authorship. And um, explain also that uh, uh, international cooperation and co-authorship boast article citations. So we can affirm that uh, a strategic use of social media foster indirectly citation of your articles. So be careful because there is an impact of your using, uh, if you use a social network, before opening any account, try to set up your strategy. And now in the second part of my lecture, I will explain you maybe how uh, use Twitter for science communication and TikTok. Twitter, of course, you can use Twitter to retrieve automatic information about your network and your topic, but it's not important for your research visibility to post and follow by using the specific tools that are useful for you in Twitter. And in my opinion, Twitter lists are a very good tools in Twitter in order to gather your network around you and to organize and prioritize the tweets you see in your timeline, saving time. If you use Twitter for a research objective, you have to show your data and competencies via data visualization. This is a very good uh, example of how to use Twitter in a very clever way. Why? Because there are, there are a lot of hashtags related to data viz that can um, 
be useful for um, broader your network and maybe go in, a, in the interdisciplinary networks with your content. It's very important also to link your profile and to your web page, if you have one web page, of course, professional web page, and uh, um, to other active accounts, if you have other active accounts. Please avoid to link to um, dead accounts, of course. Eh? Um, at the library, we can help you to find the best hashtag for your topic and for your person. Because using Twitter without a clever strategy of hashtag, hashtag is, is, is unuseful. Uh, you have to use hashtag in a very clever way. Otherwise, maybe for you, it's best to use some classic platform like ResearchGate or Academia. Here, there is a very good example of uh, uh, your colleague, Daniel Prost. Probst is a bioinformatician and uh, he created uh, in the, during the first lockdown of coronavirus uh, a Corona data website. It's a, um, this website gathering open data about cor corona, corona infections. And uh, Daniel Prost decided to share this, the content of this website, uh, especially by Twitter. And uh, many, many mainstream journals select uh, this content and describe this content in uh, normal uh, articles. And uh, your colleague is very clever because uh, he, you have here some example of tweet of uh, Daniel Prost in which he gathered uh, media stream journals, uh, other profiles, uh, network, scientific network, and some content from the Corona data in the same tweet. So um, this example is useful for you because you can understand how Twitter is very important if you want to valorize your competencies and your ability in front of citizens. And also you can use Twitter to celebrate your achievements, new teams, new projects, new, especially your participation as excerpt expert in academic boards, but not only. In the case of Daniel Prost, is uh, an expert also in institutional boards. So in, okay, so, sorry, I have to share my slide, but I can. <laughs> now we will, we will talk about TikTok, uh, if I have uh, this opportunity. Sorry, okay, perfect. So TikTok is different from Twitter, of course. TikTok, why TikTok and science? Because TikTok is one of the fastest growing social media applications among scientists in the last five years, especially. TikTok is financing science communication project and the structure is similar to Twitter, but be careful, be aware that it's visual. TikTok is visual. Using TikTok, you have to use TikTok only if you like creating visual context. If you want to explore how your colleagues are using TikTok for science communication purpose, you can use this hashtag. I suggest some hashtag. Try to do this and observe, uh, especially um, in the neuroscience or STEAM talk, uh, some example. And uh, now um, TikTok is useful for science, but in, in which sense? TikTok, you can use TikTok for sharing your research visual context. Here there is the profile of Halle Diefenbog, a colleague that is a marine biologist. It's a very good example of how to show uh, your visual context of your PhD or postdoc or your research in a very clever way and useful way. It's a good example also in terms of selection on social networks because um, uh, your colleague uh, is very good at TikTokers, but uh, the Twitter account, Instagram are not so very well structured. So uh, he decided to focus on TikTok. It's a good example. When you have a, a talent for a, one social network, try to do the efforts in this direction and not to, to have a many, many accounts in different platforms. TikTok is also useful for sharing your lab or team experience. Uh, here, there is a very good example of the Polar Foundation. It's a good video about uh, a, a team experience, but this is the example is not good for the hashtag because uh, they use some very unusual, unuseful hashtag. So um, it's a good example. You have a good content, visual content, but you anybody can find it. So try to use hashtag because uh, if you are, doing something very amazing in terms of visual content, but you, you, are, you are not thinking about Asuka, isn't useful. 
TikTok is also useful for sharing your experience in teaching. So here, there is an example, a very, very nice example, but also here there are some mistakes in terms of communication because you cannot link this account to the website, official website. It's very difficult to find a person. You don't know is it really MIT teacher or not at the beginning. And also, um, okay, there is a channel, uh, YouTube channel, but it's very difficult also to link to the YouTube channel. So try to be accurate in the linking, hmm? in the linking part of your account. TikTok is also very useful for dissemination. Dissemination is another exercise. And uh, uh, here there is uh, Kirsten Banks, very present in TV programs. And uh, it's a good example of articulation between the TV presence and TikTok presence. So it's very funny also. And TikTok is useful also for sharing your life as PhD, senior researcher or professor, but it's, a, it's an exercise that uh, uh, requires a lot of humor and you have to be very clever because you expose yourself and your private person. So be careful, it's very useful or not for your career. So thanks a lot. And um, if you have any question, I am here now and you can contact also for further explications.